JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 23rd. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the market. But before we start, let's read our, our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded lower against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. It underperformed the most versus SEC, GBP, AUD and NZD in that order, while it, ga while it gained uh, slightly only against uh, the Japanese yen. Now the weakening of the dollar and the yen combined with the strengthening of the risk-linked Aussie and Kiwi suggests that uh, market participants traded in a, in a risk-on fashion at least for the biggest part of the day. Looking at the equity world we see that major EU indices uh, traded in the red perhaps due to fresh uh, record uh, due to a fresh record on uh, on coronavirus infections on Friday as well as another 44% tumble in Wirecard's uh, stock as the company said that a quarter of its uh, of its assets uh, that uh, auditor EU EY was unable to uh, was unable to account for probably did, did not exist. That said, the broader market appetite uh, took a 180 degree turn during the US session with all three of Wall Street's uh, main indices closing positive. The upbeat morale rolled over into the Asian session uh, today as well. It seems that once again investors placed more bets on a potential economic recovery as governments around the globe continue to ease their lockdown measures despite being concerned over the latest surge in coronavirus cases. New York City celebrated the lifting of several restrictive measures while White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow said that there is uh, no second wave and that widespread shutdowns across the country are unlikely. Apart from headlines surrounding the coronavirus, we also got some on the US-China trade saga. Equities and risk-linked assets came under selling interest during the Asian session today after White House trade advisor Peter Navarro said that uh, the trade deal with China is over. However, Kudlow was quick to defuse the situation saying that uh, the deal is still in place. Even President Trump Trump his, himself tweeted that uh, the deal is still intact with equities rebounding and raising the Navarro related losses. For another day, headlines suggest that uh, there is still an ongoing battle between those who see a potential economic recovery as lockdown measures continue to ease and those who are afraid of a second coronavirus outbreak. As we noted in the past, we are in the first group and we will maintain that view as long as restrictions are getting uh, lifted and, the, and data continues to point to improvement in global economic activity. We repeat that in order to start uh, considering uh, changing our view, we need to see more nations reposing lockdown measures, something that could result in a second hit to the global economy. Now, as for today, apart from headlines and, de and developments surrounding the coronavirus, investors may pay some attention to the, pre to the preliminary PMIs for June. During the European day, we get the preliminary prints for June from several Eurozone members and the blog as a whole. Both the Euro area manufacturing and services indices are forecast to have risen further but to have remained within the below 50 territory. Specifically, the manufacturing index, the manufacturing index is expected to have risen to 44 from 39.4, while the services one is forecast to have inched up to 40.5 from 30.5. This would drive the composite PMI up to 41 from, 30, from 31.9. 
At its latest meeting, the ECB decided to, to increase its pandemic emergency purchase program by, six, by, 60, by 600 billion euros to a total of 1,315 billion euros, extending the horizon of its uh, purchases to at least the end of June 2021. Officials also repeated that they remain ready to adjust all of their instruments as, as appropriate to ensure that inflation moves towards uh, their aim in a sustained manner. Now, with the headline CPI rate at 0.1% year over year and the core one at 0.9%, another month of contraction in both the manufacturing and services sectors, despite the slower pace, may keep the door for further easing by the ECB in the foreseeable future wide open. Thus, the euro is unlikely to gain much on the relative improvement of the PMIs. We expect the short-term direction of in uh, excuse me. We expect the short-term direction in euro pairs to mainly depend on uh, on the counterpart. For example, if the counterpart if the counterpart currency is a safe haven, like the dollar and the yen, we would expect the euro to out to outperform it. The opposite could be true against uh, a risk-linked currency. We get preliminary PMIs uh, from the UK and the US as well. No forecast is currently available for the UK indices, while with regards to the US ones, both the manufacturing and services indices are expected to have increased to 47.8 and 46 from 39.8 and 37.5 respectively. Having said that though, as we know that several times in the past, market participants tend to pay more attention to the ISM indices, which are due to be released on July 1st and 6th. Now, tonight, during the Asian Morning Wednesday, the RBNZ announces its uh, monetary policy decision. At their latest gathering, policymakers of this bank decided to keep interest rates unchanged, but nearly doubled their QE purchases from 33 billion New Zealand dollars to 16 billion dollars, adding that they could still go higher. In the minutes accompanying the decision, it was noted that uh, negative interest rates will become an option in the future and that discussions about preparing for negative rates are ongoing. Since then, the only top tier indicator we got was the GDP for the first quarter, which showed that the economy contracted 1.6% quarter over quarter after expanding 0.5%. This pushed the year-over-year rate into the negative territory to minus 0.2% from 1.8%. That said, this was above the bank's own projection for the quarter, which in May was at minus 2.4% quarter-over-quarter, and thus this may allow policymakers to stay sidelined at this meeting. They may prefer to wait for more data before they start considering further rate cuts or not. However, we will still dig into the statement and the meeting minutes for clues as to how willing officials are to push interest rates into the negative territory if upcoming data comes on the soft side. Another round of uh, dovish signals may bring the Kiwi under selling interest. However, its overall path may remain dependent on changes in the broader market sentiment. If governments around the globe continue to ease their lockdown measures, this may spur more market optimism which could benefit the currency. Now, as for the rest of today's events, from the US we get uh, the new home sales for May, which are expected to have accelerated to 3.5% month over month from 0.6%, and the American Petroleum Institute report on crude oil inventories for which no forecast is available. Tonight, besides the RBRZ decision, we also get the summary of opinions from last week's Bank of Japan gathering. At that meeting, officials kept their main policy tools untouched, but noted that they are, they are likely to increase the size of money pumped out via market operations and lending facilities from the current 75 trillion yens to 110 trillion. We, uh, we will scan the summary to see how willing officials are to act again, but we don't expect this release to impact again. The Japanese currency has been wearing its uh, safe haven suit in recent months, reacting mainly to developments affecting the broader market sentiment. Now, as for the speakers, we have only one on the agenda, and this is Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow.
JFT Just Fair and Direct.